Hello, my name is Rachel. I'm one of the rehabilitation assistants here at the Golden Jubilee National Hospital. Today I'll be presenting Joint School, which gives you an insight of what to expect after your surgery and how to prepare beforehand. Before your surgery, you will have been given one of these booklets here today, which gives you all the information I'll be discussing so you can refer back to when you're at home. After your surgery, you'll have two walking aids and I'm now going to demonstrate how to safely get on and off the chair using the walking aids. So you want to stand nice and close so you can feel the chair at the back of your legs. You want to put the operated leg, that foot slightly out in front, flat on the ground. So you're taking the weight off of that leg onto the unoperated leg. Put your palms facing down onto the arms of the chair or the seat and lower yourself down. The same for getting up, keep that operated leg foot slightly out in front and use the arms to push yourself up. I'm now going to demonstrate how to get dressed after your surgery. So you want to dress the operated leg first, hook over your underwear, over your foot, bring up to your knee, lift your unoperated leg as normal through. The easiest thing to do is to put on your underwear first, your trousers and then your shoes. For your shoes, you want to wear nice flat shoes that have a back to them to give support to your feet. You can bend down to wherever is comfortable and just slip on the shoes as you normally would. From here, you want to use the chair technique. So put your operated leg, that foot flat out in front, push off the seat, and bring up all together at once. I'm now going to show you how to get undressed. So you want to use the opposite technique as to before. So you want to put the operated leg, that foot out in front, pull your trousers and underwear down to your knees and then sit yourself back down. From here you want to take off your shoes Then you want to take the unoperated leg through first, lifting as normal, sliding down and then hooking through your foot with the operated leg. I'm now going to demonstrate how to get in and out of your bed safely. It may be easier to get into your bed leading with the unoperated leg, but if you can't, don't worry about it. So you want to use the same technique as the chair. You want to stand so you can feel the bed at the back of your legs. Put the operated leg out in front, palms facing down, so lowering yourself down onto the bed. And put your sticks down. From here you want to push yourself onto the centre of the bed as far back as possible using your arms. From here you want to use slow movements round with your legs and your arms nice and slow, one at a time, toes to ceiling. If you do struggle to move this leg, you can use the trouser leg of your pyjamas or hook a dressing gown cord round. For getting out of bed, you want to push yourself up and you're moving your legs round, just like last time, toes to ceiling, using your hands, one leg at a time, and your hands. From here you want to push yourself forward so your feet are touching onto the floor and then pushing yourself up. In your booklet you will find diagrams of exercises. You should start these before you come in for your surgery to increase the chance of a positive outcome after your surgery. It makes your recovery a lot easier and hopefully a lot quicker as well. The first exercise is ankle pumps. So you'll be doing this lying in your bed. What you want to do, put your toes to your ceiling and paddle your feet. You want to do this 10 to 15 times. The next exercise are your static quads. What you want to do is press your knee firmly down into the bed for a few seconds, hold and release. 
point your toes to the ceiling, pressing that knee down, tightening that thigh muscle, hold for a few seconds and then release. The next exercise is your gluteal sets. Lying in bed again, toes to ceiling, you want to squeeze your bum cheeks together for a few seconds and hold. Squeeze your bum cheeks together and hold. You want to repeat this again for 10 to 15 times. The next exercise is your inner range quads. For this exercise, you'll want to roll up a towel to about this diameter. You want to slide your heel up so you can slide this underneath your knee. From here, relaxing toe to ceiling, you want to straighten the knee, lifting the leg up for a few seconds and lowering again. So you're squeezing that inner thigh, lifting the leg and lowering again. The next exercise is your hip abductions. You want to stay lying in the bed, pointing your toes to the ceiling, keeping that knee nice and straight. From here, you want to slide your foot and your leg outwards and back to the starting point again. Sliding out nice and slowly and back joining your feet together again. You want to repeat this for 10 to 15 times. The next exercise is heel slides and for this exercise you want to be nice and reclined onto the bed. From here, toes to ceiling, you want to slide your heel up towards your bottom and then slide back down again. The nice slow range of movement, so I'm back to the starting point again. The last two exercises will be standing and you want to hold onto a firm surface. The first one is a standing hip abduction, similar to what you did lying on the bed. So you want to stand nice and straight, keep your toes facing forward, slide your leg out to the side and back again, keeping that knee straight facing forward and back to the starting point again. The second standing exercise is your hip extension. Again, holding onto a firm surface, nice and straight, knee slightly bent. You want to slide that leg back, nice and comfortable, back to the starting point, keeping your knee and toe facing forward and your back straight. Nice and slow range of movement. I will now safely demonstrate how to go up and down stairs with your two walking aids. You want to come nice and close into the step. From here, you want to use a technique going up the stairs of using the unoperated leg, your operated leg and the sticks. So it's the unoperated leg, operated leg and sticks. Unoperated leg, operated leg, sticks unoperated leg, operated leg, sticks. Now when you come to the top, you want both sticks down and you want to move two slow movements, one leg round at a time in slow circles. For coming down the stairs, it is the opposite. So you want to use your walking sticks, the operated leg and the unoperated leg. Sticks, If you have a banister and railing in your house, the best thing to do is to make a T-shape with your sticks. So you want to lift those four fingers and slide under the sticks there so you can use the banister. From here, it's the same technique. So it's the unoperated leg, 
operator's leg, sticks and your hand on the banister. Unoperator's leg, operator's leg, sticks, hand on the banister. Now, when you get to the top, you want to place the sticks in both of the hands to use slow circular movements to get yourself back round. For coming down, it's the opposite technique again. So you're making that T shape, opening those four fingers, sliding the stick into there. Stand nice and close at the edge of the steps. You'll be using your sticks, the operated leg, and operated leg. Hand on the banister, sticks, operated leg, unoperated leg. Pain relief is very important to stay on top of after your surgery in order to achieve your post rehabilitation goals. If you're in any pain or discomfort after your surgery, please press your buzzer to let one of the nurses know. Don't be a tough warrior. We like to get you up and moving as quickly as possible and if you're in pain, it will delay this process. The discharge criteria following your surgery will be the physiotherapist will come in, they'll get you up moving about with a Zimmer frame and then independent onto two walking aids. They will practice stairs and exercises with you as well. The occupational therapist will come in and assess your independence to get on and off the toilet, chairs, beds, getting dressed and they will discuss how to follow daily activities. So we advise to start your exercises before your surgery as it increases the chance of a positive post-surgery outcome, making your recovery a lot easier and quicker. Do what you can manage and listen to your body. It's important to strengthen the entire body, especially your arms, as you will be using these muscles with walking sticks and transfers. Post-surgery, you want to independently complete these exercises for 12 weeks. There are nine exercises. You want to repeat these 10 to 15 times, about four times per day.